what medication should be used for sedation morphine is the most commonly used low doses are used uh, for a short duration and this should not impact the neurodevelopmental outcome however the neo pain study as well as other research has shown uh, high doses if prolonged uh, might cause withdrawal reactions and long term concerns especially cerebellar hypoplasia and uh, potential impact on iq uh, fentanyl is similar to morphine being an opioid but it's very potent uh, and it has a short half life and rapid onset so it's more useful for acute procedures and for pre medication for intubation however we should be very careful when we use fentanyl it has to be given over 3 to 5 minutes very slowly uh, please remind the nurses how long 3 to 5 minutes is because if you give it as a push uh, the baby goes for chest wall rigidity and is quite difficult to bag i have had a few babies uh, where it's quite difficult to bag they may have bradycardia and you may need chest compression and a quick intubation uh, during the process so uh, if you are using fentanyl supervise the procedure be sure that someone with the good intubation skill is around and you need a mask with a good seal lma can help in these cases as well because the seal is more effective with lma so uh, intubation and chest drain uh, fentanyl is in given and it can be given as a continuous infusion as well and uh, at a lower dose much lower dose and we in quickly same principle applies midazolam has been shown to have significant uh, side effects on uh, neuro development as well as it prolongs the duration of ventilation uh, prolongs the time taken to reach full feeds and obviously uh fluid redistribution is a big issue with midazolam as well because there is water retention and uh, uh, chest wall edema so we may have hypotension and there is increased risk of ivh related to that neurodevelopmental concerns are noted and i mentioned the fluid shift uh, try to avoid midazolam if you need a sedative agent use for a minimal period don't use higher doses if you are using for sedation uh remember that midazolam doesn't have much of an analgesic effect so if you need analgesia we need morphine with midazolam uh paralytic agents like succinamethonium pancuronium rocuronium atracurium these can be used again to tide over acute crises in the post operative severe cases like diaphragmatic hernia tracheoesophageal fistula for the first day or so you don't need to keep them paralyzed for a long time allow the baby to gain back their breathing effort even in diaphragmatic hernia i tend to wean off the paralysis by day 2 day 3 the earlier we wean off the less problems we face with fluid shifts in pphn if you use you can use a bolus of a paralytic to tide over don't start an infusion unless it's essential the hypotension may be negative in these cases a quick word about uh, the new medication relatively new dexmedi dexmeditomidin or presidex it's quite uh, long used in pcus and uh, anesthetists uh, have used it for a long time as well in neonatology for the past 8 to 10 years it's uh, gaining use uh, it's an alpha 2 agonist <clears throat> and it's safe to use there is no inhibition of respiratory function as well as no uh, impact on gut motility so side effect profile is good uh, there is a possible reduction in apoptosis and possible neuroprotection so even in uh, asphyxiated babies undergoing cooling you can consider this instead of using opioids uh, bradycardia has been noted as a side effect and the dose we can start with 0.1 microgram per kilogram per hour and increase gradually the maximum dose is 1 microgram per kilo per hour so uh, in our unit we have used it as post operative uh, sedative and uh, it works well obviously uh, in general uh, recapping if you have a unit where you are used to uh, using a routine sedation or analgesia for ventilated babies you need a education pattern so you have to train the team you have to uh, reassure them that uh, we can cuddle the baby we can do more skin to skin care we can uh, use sucrose sucrose analgesia briefly uh, developmental friendly care should be applied and because the ventilation is synchronized once the intubation is done the baby shouldn't really need uh, uh, analgesia the tube uh, discomfort gets habituated as well so the earlier uh, you wean the babies off the ventilation it's better and not using sedation is much better from that point of view if you have a very sick baby and you need to use analgesia use it for the minimum duration of time i hope uh, this is helpful uh, thank you uh, one quick point about uh, use of caffeine in babies needing iv sedation so caffeine is a stimulant and it's used for apnea of prematurity it's used early in babies who are likely to cope with non invasive ventilation uh so in babies who are needing uh, sedation because they are having a higher requirement i said that you won't routinely use sedation or 
analgesia. So if you are using that because the ventilation is tough, you can hold the caffeine in these cases because it's paradoxical. You give a stimulant and a sedative analgesic at the same time. Uh, so uh, you can hold the caffeine and you can restart it before the extubation. You may consider a, a 10 milligram per kilo loading dose uh, or a full loading dose if it's more than five days since the last dose. So review this practice as well. So I, I hope uh, this helps. To summarize, only use sedation if essential and not as a routine. Stick to the lowest required dose, which is uh, 5 to 10 microgram per kilo per hour of morphine or its equivalent. And use pre sedex if uh, needing more and avoid uh, midazolam or paralytics unless it's unavoidable and wean them off quickly. Use IV or rectal paracetamol uh, as analgesic to reduce the dose of opioids for uh, post-operative pain. Uh, please do share this video and encourage your team uh, to review this and uh, reconsider your practice if you are doing something different.